Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlumiCheaters.com and in this video we're going to be looking at variable oxidation states uh, and in particular we're going to look at chromium chemistry. So if you can remember that one of the main features of transition metals is that they have variable oxidation states uh, and we're obviously going to look at chromium in this particular video although you do need to know about cobalt and copper but they'll be in other videos. So basically we're going to look at the uh, compounds they form, we're going to look at uh, reduction and oxidation and yes, Le Chatelier is back as well in this video. So we're going to look at how Le Chatelier uh, effectively, um, or his rule, um, influences the uh, chemistry of chromium based compounds. So we're going to start with looking at the different types of chromium compounds. So I've got these written up on the right here. So uh, we've got chromium. Uh, exists in the following forms. So we've got uh, something called dichromate, and this is uh, orange in colour. It's like a pale orange colour. It looks a little bit like iron brew, um, and uh, it has an oxidation state of plus six. Now, if you can remember how we work out the oxidation state, is we look at the most electronegative element. In this case, it's oxygen. Oxygen has an a um, has a electro has a, a, an oxidation number of minus two. So we have seven of them, so that's minus 14 in total. Um, the overall charge of the, um, of the whole molecule is minus two. So therefore, uh, the chromium, which is the Cr2+, plus, uh, has got to be plus six as a result. Um, because if we had two lots of uh, plus six, that would give it plus 12. Uh, and the oxygen is minus 14 combined. Uh, and the overall charge is minus two. So in this case, the oxidation state of chromium here is plus six. And the next one down, which is CrO4, two minus, is called chromate. Uh, this is yellow in color, so it's very similar to the orange, but just a bit paler. Uh, and again, it has an oxidation state of plus six. Uh, we also have other forms, such as chromium three plus, um, which is the um, chromium ion, chromium three plus, which is green, forms green solutions. Uh, and then chromium two plus, which forms blue solutions when mixed with water. Okay, and just a reminder that oxidation is basically an increase in oxidation number and reduction is a reduction, is obviously a decrease in oxidation number. And that will become uh, useful when we do the examples over here. Okay, um, so the first thing we're going to point out really is that these two, which are the dichromate and the chromate, uh, these two actually exist in equilibrium naturally. So there's no redox reaction occurring here. I'm just going to show you what up here, and you can see we've got uh, dichromate here, and this is the orange colour. Uh, and if we react it with hydroxide, or we mix it with hydroxide uh, ions, then we form chromate ions, which are over here on the right. And vice versa, the chromate ions, if we react that with an acid, and we put it in acid, like acidic conditions, uh, then we form dichromate ions. So this whole lot exists in equilibrium. So uh, I've got the reaction written down here uh, in a uh, in a reaction form an ionic equation. So you can see here we've got the dichromate reacts with hydroxide ions, uh, and it's in equilibrium with chromate and H plus. Now this obviously has an effect depending on the pH that we put this in will depend on what color the solution we get, uh, and this is where Lichtenstein's principle comes in. Now. Um, Effectively, if we take this solution here uh, and we put it into, uh, let's say we put acid into it and the, the conditions that this equilibrium was in was in an acidic condition, if I add H plus to this, remember Lichtenstein's principle uh, states that any reactions that are in equilibrium will try to oppose a change that uh, something um, that, you, that you put on it. If you, oppose, if you impose a change on it, the reaction will try to uh, do the opposite and try to reduce the effect of that change. So if we add a H plus ion to this, then effectively what happens is we increase the concentration of this, because we've added more of this, and the reaction will naturally shift to the left to reduce the amount of H plus ions that are in the system. And so therefore, equilibrium will shift to the left, and I'll put that on there. EQM will move left. Uh, and effectively, you produce more dichromate. So we'll put that on there as well. So more Cr2, O72 minus. And obviously, our solution uh, in acidic condition should be orange. That's the colour that we would see. So we see this orange colour, we know that the solution is going to be quite acidic. If we did the opposite, let's say we added 
uh, more hydroxide ions to this solution at equilibrium, then effectively what we're doing is we increase the amount of these in our system. Uh, according to the Lichetilia's principle, it will try and oppose the change, so it will shift to the right to use these up, and therefore um, we will have more uh, chromate ions, which is yellow. So our solution should start to turn yellow when we add hydroxide ions. So I'm going to write that on there as well. So again, we'll put equili equilibrium will move to the right. Uh, and effectively what we get is we get more chromate ion, which is CrO4 2 minus. And so the solution should go yellow. Now you can see this exists quite naturally in equilibrium. There's no redox here. This is not a redox reaction, this bit here, because the oxidation states haven't changed. So if you remember from over here, we've got a plus 6 for dichromate and a plus 6 for chromate. So there's no change in oxidation. Okay, so if we just look at the um, some of the other reactions that happen. So let's say we can take our dichromate, our orange solution, and if we add zinc and an acid to it, uh, effectively what happens is we can reduce it to form chromate ions, uh, chro sorry, uh, chromium ions, which is chromium 3 plus. Now, chromium 3 plus is a green color. This is reduction because we've gone from plus 6 at the start here and we've gone down to plus 3. So this is a reduction reaction. And effectively, we just add the acid and the zinc, chunks of zinc, swirl it around, uh, and our color, we should get a green color, which shows that reduction process has occurred. Um, so this is quite important. And obviously, we can go backwards as well. We can take the chromate, uh, the chromium 3 plus iron, sorry, uh, and we can add hydrogen peroxide, which is a really strong oxidizing agent, uh, and some alkali as well, some OH minus. Uh, and effectively, that will form the chromate ion, which is um, this one here, and that's yellow. And again, if we acidify that, uh, we can then get our dichromate back again. So we can go in a few steps here. And there's one more bit here as well, which is chromium 2 plus. Now, chromium 2 plus is blue in color, and it's really unstable. Um, in fact, so unstable um, that um, as soon as it's formed, if you've got any air in your uh, reaction vessel at all, or any contact with oxygen, it will readily um, oxidize back to Cr3+. Plus. It's really difficult to make. And so that's why when you're going from Cr3 plus to Cr2 plus, um, we use zinc as, a re as our reducing agent, uh, but we have to do it in an inert atmosphere or an inert environment. Uh, so that could be something like nitrogen or argon gas that we could use, and then we could form our blue uh, chromium complex. Um, but if we didn't, it'd be very difficult to form the chromium 2 plus uh, in that case. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Variable oxidation states, chromium chemistry. Bye.